Question eight, differentiate egg lock x minus x with respect to x, and then part b, find the general solution to this differential equation. So part a, let's say y equals x log x minus x, and we're going to use the product rule on x log x. So we've got u is equal to x, we've got v, u dash is 1, and then v is log x, of course, which means v dash is 1 over x. And just a reminder, so we've got u dash v plus v dash u. So that's 1 times log x plus 1 over x times x or log x plus 1. So that means that on this side, differentiating it, the y by the x. Must be log x plus 1, minus 1, because differentiating of x is just 1. So the y by the x in this case is just log x. Part b, hence find the general solution to this differential equation. The y by the x plus y log x equals x to the power of minus x. So our integrating factor from part 1 is simply going to be e to the power of the integral of log x dx and we know then that is just going to be e to the x log x minus x. So that means our integrating factor is e to the log of x to the power of x times e to the minus x. So that means our integrating factor is just simply x to the power of x times e to the minus x. So we can just times both sides by our integrating factor. So we've got x to the power of x, e to the minus x, the y by the x, plus y, x to the power of x, e to the minus x, log x. And that equals the right hand side, which is x to the power of minus x times x to the power x, e to the minus x. So that implies we've got d by dx of x to the power x, e to the minus x, times y equals e to the power minus x. So x to the power minus x, e to the minus x, y must equal the integral of e to the power minus x, dx, so x to the power of x, e to the minus x, y equals minus e to the minus x plus c, and therefore y is just minus e to the minus x plus c over x to the power of x, e to the minus x, and that final answer can be left in a lot of different ways. Question 9 says the matrix A is given by 3 minus 2, 0, 1. Prove by induction that A to the n is 3 to the n, 1 minus 3 to the n, 0, 1, for all n a member of the natural numbers. So this is proof by induction, so let's prove for n equal to 1. So if n equals to 1, A to the 1 would be 3 to the 1, 1 minus 3 to the 1, 0, 1. So that equals 3, 1 minus 3, 0, 1, which equals 3 minus 2, 0, 1, which we already know equals A. So we've proved true for N equal to 1. So assume true for N equal to K. Therefore, that would say that a to the k would equal 3 to the k, 1 minus 3 to the k, 0, 1. And now we need to prove it for n equal to k plus 1. So for prove true for n equal to k plus 1. So when n equals to k plus 1, a to the k plus 1, well that would equal 
a to the power of k times a, or since we're dealing with matrices, a times a to the k. And we'll just prove one of the one of these. So a to the power of k times a. Well, I don't know what a to the power of k is, we've just worked out that that's 3 to the k, or minus 3 to the k, 0, 1. And we already know what a is, that's 3 minus 2, 0 and 1. So matrix multiplication, let's just give ourselves a nice big matrix. So we've got 3 to the k times 3. And we've got this times 0, which is 0, so that's our first element. We've then got 3 to the k times minus 2. And we've got 1 times 1 minus 3 to the k times 1. So plus 1 minus 3 to the k. Our next element, 0 times 3 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0. And our last element, 0 times minus 2 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1. So we need to tidy that up and make it look like a to the k plus 1. So we need k plus 1's appearing. So that equals, well, our first element, 3 to the power of k times another 3 is 3 to the k plus 1. Our second element, we've got, I'm not going to, we've got minus 2, 3 to the k plus 1, then minus 3 to the k. So if I take 3 to the k out as a common factor of the terms in 3 to the k, that gives me minus 2 take away 1. And I've still got plus 1 on the end. So that's 3 to the k times minus 2, 3 to the k times minus 1. And then I've still got this plus 1 that isn't attached. And then you've got 0, 1, which is what we would need. So that equals 3 to the k plus 1. Minus 2 take away 1 is minus 3. So 3 to the k times minus 3 plus 1, 0, 1. So that's 3 to the k plus 1. 3 to the k times 3. Well, that's just 3 to the k plus 1 again with a minus, 0, 1. So in other words, 3 to the k plus 1. 1 minus 3 to the k plus 1, 0, 1. But that equals a to the k plus 1. So therefore, the conjecture is proved true for n equal to 1, assumed true for n equal to k, and proved true for n equal to k plus 1. So hence, by induction, a to the n equals 3 to the n, 1 minus 3 to the n, 0, 1, for all n a member of the natural numbers is proved true. And we're done. Okay, question 10 says solve the differential equation d squared y over dx squared minus 4 dy by dx plus 4y equals 9 sine x plus 13 cos x. Given that y equals 5 and dy by dx equals 0 when x equals 0. Strap in. This is going to be a long one. Okay, let's start off with our left hand side and look at the auxiliary equation. So we have got m squared minus 4m plus 4 equal to 0, which is a perfect square, m minus 2 squared equals 0, so that implies that m just equals 2. Therefore, a complementary function is just a e to the 2x plus bx e to the 2x. Right hand side, we've got 9 sine x plus 13 cos x. So we let y equal c sine x plus d cos x, which means dy by dx is simply c cos x 
minus d sine x, which gives us d squared y by dx squared equaling minus c sine x minus d cos x. And at this point, we substitute this back in to our differential equation. So substitute into, so we've got minus c sine x minus d cos x, that's our d squared y by dx squared. Now I'll do this on separate lines so it's easy to see. Minus 4 c cos x plus 4 d sin x. So plus 4 c sin x. Plus 4 d cos x. And remember, all of this equals our right-hand right side, which was 9 sin x plus 13 cos x. And we're just going to equate our sines and cosies to find d and c. So let's just do some counting. So for our sin x, we've got minus c sin x, and we've got plus 4c, so we've got 3c sin x. And looking at our d's in terms of sin x, we have got 4d sin x as well. And then looking at our cost terms, in terms of c, we've got minus 4c cos x. And looking at our cost terms for d's, We've got minus 1d cos x plus 4d cos x, so we've got 3d cos x. And again, that all equals 9 sin x plus 13 cos x. So that implies you can clearly see here then, because we'll separate it out of sine cos, 3c plus 4d must equal 9, and our second equation minus 4c plus 3d equals 13. So we've got simultaneous equations to solve. So I'll times the top by 4 and the bottom by 3. So we've got 12c plus 16d equals 36. And we've got minus 12c plus 9d equals 39. Adding them together, 16 and 9 is 25d. 39 and 36 is 40, 50, 60, 75. So d is a nice round number, which is 3. And we can now find c by substituting back in. 3c plus 4 times 3 equals 9. So 3c plus 12 equals 9, so 3c is minus 3, so c is negative 1. So we've got our c and d, so we know our particular integral. So remember, our particular integral is c sine x plus d cos x. So that means we've got minus sine x plus 3 cos x. Or making that look nicer, 3 cos x minus sine x. And well, that's where d equals 3 and c equals minus 1. Okay, we've got our particular integral. We just need to now find our general solution by adding on our particular integral to our complementary function. So for our general solution, plus 
plus 3 cos x now minus sin x. Okay, so let's find our A's and B's by differentiating this and recalling what the question actually told us at the start that if we go back, y equals 5 and divided by the x is 0 when x is 0. So we know this. Let's just take a note of that, remember, just to keep us right. y equals 5, the y by the x equals 0 at x equal to 0. So if we differentiate it, we should be, and substitute in, we should be able to find a value now for a and b. So we'll just call that our y general solution. So our dy by dx is 2a e to the 2x. And then using the product rule on the second term, we're going to have 2bx e to the 2x. And then differentiating x gives us 1, so plus b e to the 2x. Cost becomes minus sine, and sine becomes cos. Okay, so let's substitute y equals 5 and x equals 0 in, and then also substitute x equals 0 and the y by dx equals 0 in. So x equals 0, y equals 5, so we've got 5 equals a, because e to the 0 is 1, plus b times 0, so that's 0, plus 3 times the cos of nothing, that's plus 3 then, minus sine of nothing, which is nothing, so 5 equals a plus 3, that implies a must equal 2. And then our second substitution, when x equals 0, the y by dx equals 0. So we're using the whole of this. We've got 0 equals 2a e to the 0. Second term will be nothing because we've got times and by nothing. Third term will give us b. Fourth term, we've got nothing, and the fifth term, minus 1. So we've got a nice equation. Substituting our 2 in, we've got 0 equals 2 times 2 is 4, plus b minus 1. That implies that b must equal minus 3. So therefore, our general solution is y equals 2e to the 2x minus 3x e to the 2x plus 3 cos x minus sin x. And we're done there, finally. <laughs>